Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are studying the holiday season, Bible studies for Easter. In this session, we'll be looking at Luke chapter 23, verses 39 to 43, a promise of paradise. Let's look at those verses, Luke 23, verse 39. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and, and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing we are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Of all the words spoken by Jesus from the cross, this promise of eternal life to a condemned criminal illustrates his unique character so clearly. He promised to provide what every person hoped for, but no one can ever gain with human effort. Author Calvin Miller described Jesus' words as a cross cry that illustrates the transcendent power of Jesus as he unites the present with the eternal by promising to provide rest for our souls in eternal paradise. We need to respond as the thief did in order to enter paradise with Jesus. First, think of the condition of the sinner. Verse 39 and 40. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answered, rebuking him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? The thief reveals the condition of every person before God. He was physically helpless. He was unable to attend church. He could not give an offering. He could not perform good deeds. He was nailed to a cross. His condition reflects the insufficiency of our good deeds to accomplish salvation. There is nothing we can ever do physically to obtain forgiveness of our sins. We are physically helpless. And while it may be true that you have never committed a crime that is punishable by death, Scripture re clearly declares that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says that no one is righteous and the wage of our sin is death, which is separation from God. Describing our sinful condition before coming to Christ Paul used words of being spiritually dead. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. We need someone and something greater than our sin to make us alive so that we can respond to God's offer of eternal life. Second, think of the conversion of a sinner. Verses 41 and 42. And we justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The process of being transformed from a dead sinner into a living believer is portrayed in the conversion experience of the thief. This criminal demonstrated how any person receives forgiveness of sin and inherits eternal life. He admitted his sin. We received the due reward of our deeds. Sadly, Many people are unwilling to admit their sin before God. 
Instead, they want to boast about how good they are. Some think God is going to allow them to enter his holy heaven by bringing a small housewarming gift. It's only by confessing your sin that you can receive forgiveness. He acknowledged the Savior. This man has done nothing wrong. He rebuked the other thief and declared that Jesus had done nothing wrong. He understood Jesus as King of Kings. He understood Jesus came to establish a spiritual kingdom. He understood Jesus is Lord of all. And without him, we can't enter eternal life. He asked for salvation. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Many people have sufficient knowledge about the claims of Christ. They understand that Jesus is the Son of God who gave his life for the sins of the world. And some even admit their sinful condition. And yet, so many people have not asked Jesus to be their Savior. They are unwilling to turn from their sin in repentance. The thief was saved from his sin and entered into eternal paradise because he admitted his sin, acknowledged the supremacy of Christ, and asked for salvation. And then third, think of the compassion of the Savior. Verse 43, And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. The conversion of the sinner was made possible by the compassion of the Savior. Jesus was not obligated to save the thief. He could have said, look, you had your choice. You, you had your chance. You heard me preach and saw the miracles, but you never responded to my offer. It's too late for you, man. But he didn't. Notice the phrase, with me. Jesus did not offer the thief some small apartment on a side street on the backside of heaven. He told the thief, you will be with me. Let's say, admit your sin, that you are rebellious as a sinner before God. Acknowledge Jesus Christ, that he died for you and rose from the dead. Ask for salvation. Put your trust in Jesus. Believe him today. You have a great day.